I praise and thank God for the opportunity to speak before you today. Indeed, God is sovereign and nothing happens by accident. It's my prayer that may God accomplish whatever purposes He has for all of us today. It is also my prayer that may God put every word in my mouth so that I will only speak His words and not mine. To Him be the glory, power, and praise. I would like to share my testimony in line with the topic, Loving God. I see two aspects of this theme. Loving as an adject adjective describing the very nature of God and loving as a verb describing how we should respond to God's love. Hence, let me begin with my life. Loving God describing the very nature of God, God's evidence love of my, in my life. I came from a very humble beginning. I am the eldest among the nine children of the family. Both of my parents were now deceased. My parents were married tenants and both only finished elementary grades. We do not own any property. Even the small lot where our former small house was built belongs to a relative. We were also among the poorest families in our community. At a very young age, I learned to worry where to get the next meal. I remember sleeping with my brothers and sister in the floor. We do not have individual rooms. Our former house was a small nipa hut without rooms. I often wake up or woke up at the middle of the night and look at my siblings thinking, what will happen if both my parents will suddenly die? How I am going to raise my siblings? I also, I also sleep near a big can where we put our rice. I always move it to see if it's full. If it starts to move, I know that in the coming days, we do not have rice to cook. The story of a crab. One night, my father went to the sea to catch some fish because he knew that the following day, we don't have rice to cook. As a young kid, probably I was in the first grade, I remembered asking God to bless my father with a big catch so that we will have rice the following day. My father was unaware of, that I prayed for him that night. According to him that night, he went back and forth with his fish net to catch some fish, but caught nothing. He, des he decided to go home, but something made him to try one last time. He was so surprised when he raised his fish net, something heavy. He couldn't believe it, but he caught a very big crab, the back of which is big as a plate. When he came home that night, he told us the story. I was so happy because I know God answered my prayer. Hence the beginning of my journey of faith with God. My mother was able to sell the crop for 50 pesos, but at that time, it was already a big amount of money. She bought rice, lasted for several days. I told my father about my answered prayer, and I knew he was so happy and blessed because he can now see the spiritual influence he had in my life. I dreamed to become a lawyer. Most farmers in my community borrowed money from middlemen with usurious interest. Farmers do not, do not have choice because they do not have collaterals to borrow money from the banks. My father borrowed money from a middleman. I was present when he paid him. The middleman came back another day and asked my father to pay him again. My father told him that I already paid you. The middleman denied receiving any payment and asked my father, do you have any evidence? The middleman threatened my father that if he will not pay him, he will sue him, he will sue him in court. My poor father paid him again and I was so mad and asked him, why do you need to pay him again? My father told me that it's better for him to pay him rather being sued because he cannot afford a lawyer and he's so scared to go to court. I asked why do pe poor people don't have lawyers and he told me it's just the way it is. I felt so frustrated and I knew that something needs to be done. I told my father, I want to become a lawyer for the poor. My father later on admitted to me, he does not even know how to send me to college. How can he afford me to go to law school? But since he remembered about the story of the crowd, he just nodded his head. Because of my experience with the story of the crowd, I knew nothing is impossible with God. I started dreaming to become a lawyer at the first grade. Then the dream became my prayer. 
As a young girl, I knew someday I will become a lawyer for the poor. A scholarship from Tier Fund, Great Britain. God gifted me with intelligence. Hence, I finished elementary to high school through academic scholarship. At the time I entered college through academic scholarship, I was unaware of a policy in my country that you need to get a pre-law course to be qualified to proceed to law proper. I took up psychology instead of political science because of the university I choose to study. BS psychology is not a normal preparatory course for law. However, during the time I was studying, the policy for proceeding to law proper was changed. The current policy now is that as long as you have a bachelor degree, no matter what it is, you can proceed to law proper. In the Philippines, to become a lawyer, you need to study at a minimum of eight years and six months review. When I finished BS Psychology, I want to go to the school, but I don't have money. I started working, but my prayers to become a lawyer never parted me. I tried to study law as a working student. I worked as a church secretary and a private secretary for my poster parents who were Christian missionaries. So exhausting, I feel so tired. One night, riding on a bus on my way back home from college to law, I saw one of the most beautiful scenery in my life. I was in Aringay La Union Bridge. It was full moon, around 11 p.m. in the evening. The sky was so bright and clear. I can see the mountains, the river ending up to the sea. And I said, what a majestic creation. Then all of a sudden, I realized that the God who made this wonderful creation is my father. I told myself, my father is very rich. He owns everything, including the thousand cattle on the hills. And I asked God if it's too much for him just to send me to one of the best law schools in the Philippines. And I said, the problem is not with God. The problem is with me. And then I realized, I said, what's the difference between me, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and David? All of us experience cold, we get sick, we get hang, hungry. But what made them extraordinary? And I said, their faith. Yes, their faith set them aside from the ordinary men. I told myself, yes, the difference is faith. That night again, after more than 20 years of the story of the crowd, I started claiming that God will send me to one of the best law schools in the Philippines as a full-time student. I started proclaiming that I am God's scholar. The following day, I told my classmates that I will be transferring to this school to be a full-time student. They told me, I said, you said that your father is poor and cannot afford you to go to school. And I told them, yes, my earthly father is poor, but my heavenly father is rich. And they look at me thinking I'm a fool. <laughs> One day, my poster father gave me a letter to type. I read the letter and told him that he needs to include my name. The letter was a recommendation for a scholarship in Great Britain. My foster father smiled and told me, there is no law for scholarship. And I told him that he needs to include my name anyway, or else I'll not type his letter. <laughs> my foster father smiled to me, and no, he did, just to accommodate me. After a few days, he received a reply. Everybody, including me, were asked to submit a resume. We did. A few weeks passed, a reply came. Among all the three applicants, I was the only one admitted. As our pastor was disqualified because of the school he chose, and my other churchmate was disqualified for being an underage. My poster father asked me, how do you know you will get it? And I told him, because I believe God will. But before that, I already got my confirmation and a reservation for my dorm in my school. To God's grace, I finished law and passed the bar. I became a lawyer. The very classmate who thought I was a fool when I told them that my father in heaven is still rich congratulated me, and until now, they're still in the process of becoming a lawyer. <laughs> Lifetime is not enough. Words are not enough. My life is not even enough to describe how loving is God to me and to my family. Oftentimes, I sing the song, Why have you chosen me? I do not have an answer except the fact that I know that God loves me. Now, how will I respond to God's love for me? Loving God as a verb, my response to God's love to me. Loving God for me as a response is serving people, serving others, both the believers and unbelievers. 
And this is in connection to my life verse as found in Acts 20, 24. It says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. It is my prayer that every person I will encounter will say, having an encounter with me is having an encounter with God. Like Amy Grant's son says, she got my father's eyes. God has done so much in my life. One way I can express my love for God is loving and serving others. My mission to become a lawyer for the poor never departed me. Before, I cannot understand why I need to leave the Philippines temporarily to be here. God is allowing me to learn everything I need to learn to better equip me to implement His plans and purposes in my life. I'm still in the process, but here are my plans for God. I'd like to convert my existing law office in the Philippines. Its name is El Picar Law Office. EL stands for God, and Picar is my maiden name. God is my partner in that law office. I'd like to convert that someday to become a Christian law firm for the poor. And in addition to that, I'd like also to this, this Christian law firm to include putting a ministry to reach out to law students for them to become Christian lawyers. It's much easier to reach out low students and train them to become Christian lawyers. Secondly, I'd like to establish a Christian foundation in the Philippines. The foundation to provide, among others, scholarship for the poor and the serving, livelihood project for the poor, retirement and benefits for pastor and Christian workers. They don't have anything here because they have everything in heaven, but somehow we need to help them and others. And thirdly, I'd like to establish Christian school in the Philippines. I believe that education is a good tool to teach God's word in a non-threatening way. I want to impart my life experiences to others, especially the young children. I want to leave a Christian legacy. In closing, I am forever grateful to God for saving me as his child. I owe everything to him and he deserves everything out of me. I am currently reviewing for the California bar exam. It's very tough. Everything is foreign to me. I studied totally different laws from the Philippines, which I cannot even apply here. I did not attend a school here. I am challenging, challenging the California bar exam to become a lawyer. My only confidence comes from God. Like David, when he fought Goliath said, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I say the same thing. I'm going to take the California bar exam, not with a degree from UCLA, Harvard, nor Stanford, but by the name of the God of Israel, the sovereign ruler and creator of the whole universe, the giver of wisdom and intelligence. And as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your head, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image you have set up. I know you are praying for me. Some churches and Christian families and friends are praying for me to pass the bar exam. But still, God has the final say. And like Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, even if God does not, thy will be done, and I will continually to love, serve, worship, and praise God. Now unto our sovereign Father, awesome Lord, loving Redeemer, behold glory, power, and praise. Father, be glorified forever and ever. Amen. Amen.